Derwent Chroma Flow, and it comes in the 150 box, but I didn't get 150. I got 78. Hi everyone, it's Christina from Christina's Art Corner. How are we doing today? It seems like long time no video. Well, it's been about seven days. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on uh, here behind the scenes with family, surgeries, all the things. Not to mention how dadgum hot it has been. Oh my gosh. So, but. I have an update video for you today. So I have haul items. I'll have some B-roll going because I have actually redone some of my art room as far as organization. We'll talk about that. I'll specifically roll that when I talk about it so that you can see. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can get a few things off the floor before I do that, <laughs> ideally. But it'll give you an idea of what I'm doing. Okay. So I think we'll go ahead and start with haul items. I put in an order uh, for Blick. And I'm always in search of watercolor books and palettes. It's probably one of my favorite mediums to use in coloring books and outside of coloring books. And so I found this Montval Kansen watercolor cold press book and I think we're going to go ahead and use this for spoil alert some su supplies that we have for today and it's a 9 by 12 with uh, 300 GSM 140 pounds paper all right there's that one and then I got a hardback Strathmore watercolor 48 pages and this is eight and a half by 11 uh, 140 pound 300 GSM also and this is also cold press all right but I think I want to use this for something more specifically than like the tear out pages that I can use for swatching and different things that I want to do that are loose so I won't spend too much time on those they're just empty you know books so I'll put these to the side until we need them but I did get those from Blick and then I also have these Art Pop liquid watercolor neon colors. Now, I just redid my nails and I know I've already messed them up because <laughs> they still are slightly tacky. So let's see here. All right, one of the reasons that I wanted to get some neon colors is that I'm a part now of the Alien Worlds data report. It's a hashtag on Instagram, and it's a group that is hosted by Happy Catastrophe, and you can find her on YouTube and on Instagram, and My Alien Worlds by Kirby Rosanis Journey has some neons, and so I thought it would be nice to try these out and see if I want to use them for that but I'm always in for some neon colors and we probably have tabs to take off so we'll do that I'll show you now and then we'll go into some uh, play in a little bit just so that I can just show you what I got from this haul and then we can go from there okay so that's the art pop now I have some art pop watercolor pencils that are pretty decent so I thought I would go ahead and try those and let's see what's glaring at you here. I'm sorry for knocking you. This one, I was super excited. I had been waiting for this. It seems like, gosh, the lighting is, I don't know, too bright maybe? And maybe not bright enough in some areas. Let me just switch some things around here. This is the uh, Strumpfs. And I had to get Smurfs. I had to get this from Amazon France because Lyrica or Lyrica, whichever way you like to say it, was sold out immediately. Like when I went to the website, sold out. Amazon US, not carrying it. Uh, I went to several other places. I landed on 
Amazon France and that's where I was able to get a copy. Smurfs is one of my favorite pastime cartoons. We all have something that is nostalgic for us and this would be for me. And so I'm just going to go ahead and spoil alert because you can't really see the lines if I just, you know, flip through. I guess here's really an example if you wanted to see that. But the lines are so tiny it'd be hard. It would be hard to just flip through a blank book to you. So look away if you're getting this book and you don't want to see. Or you're thinking about getting this book. And I'll just go through a few. So as not to even spoil all of it. Oh, it looks like we have Angry Smurf. <laughs> and this one has a double page spread, a few of them, throughout. And look how cute. Look how cute these images are. I mean, this was, ah, this was my childhood. I spent a lot of time watching Smurfs on rainy days. Mostly I was an outside kid, but look how cute some of these are. <laughs> so adorable. And here is another double page spread here. And Gargamel and Azriel. Aren't these cute? Ugh. I guess you have to be a Smurf. Well, not necessarily be a Smurf fan because there's going to be some generations that it's a double page spread that weren't into it. But, ugh. La, 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 la. Oh, here's a couple double pages. And another one. I like that they're doing some double pages, but boy, they're going to take a while, huh? And, um... Gotta make sure you got some uh, blue acrylic marker, whatever medium you use, plenty of it. Because obviously you're going to have a lot of blue in these pages. But yeah, super excited to have this. Bubbling of Coloring and I had talked about really being excited for this release. And I am so super stoked to have it and can't wait to get started on a page. I think she already did one, so she beat me to the punch. <laughs> so that was Strumps. The Smurfs. Next one is uh, Mythographic Wild Summer by Joseph Kattenbang. And for this one, I saw a couple of flip throughs. I had uh, already ordered it early on, but I thought I would wait till this video to go ahead and show you all. So I know that many of you have probably seen some flip throughs already. So I'll just give you a quick look. I really do love the images in this particular one. Like, it seemed to get better and better, like, less confusing things on the page. And not necessarily less detail, but, like, you can tell what's what, and I really like that. It's a beautiful B page. Look how cute. Oh, that's an awesome crab. Oh, this is so sweet. I really, I want to do all of them. I want to do all of them. But look how cute they are. Aren't they adorable? I just love, love, love. Yeah. So that is Wild Summer by Joseph Kattenbang. And I really want to be able to get into more of my mythographic books. How I get to do that remains to be seen. Uh, the next book is the illustrations by R.J. Hampson in Fantasy Tiny Homes. Now, this book, from what I understand, I can be corrected if I'm wrong, but he's this book had come out a while ago, but this is a re-release with changes to his illustrations. And I think it might be not changes to all of them, but changes in some. I don't have the original book, and I also got the hardback, right? So I don't know. I don't have have it to compare. But let me see here if he mentions 25 original beautifully hand-drawn illustrations. But it was on his Facebook that I saw. Fresh coloring pages, da-da-da-da. By the way, you can always get free pages if you sign up um, on his Facebook. So, yeah, look how cute this page is. Can we just mention the mobile castle? how cute that is but he, he was mentioning that he was enjoying uh, being able to like tweak these a little bit look how cute we got a VW van wagon <laughs> that's cute 
just love all of his illustrations. Again, another set of books I wish I could. Uh, I sometimes really think to myself, I'd love to take just one book and just page after page after page after page after page because when I do a variety, which I like to do, I like to show you all variety. I like variety for myself. There are some times where I would really like to do like quite a few pages in a book. Um, but it's hard to find the time, you know, to do it all. But I just love R.J. Hampton books. How cute. <laughs> Get the teapot. And, you know, the paper is slightly better than Amazon. But I still wouldn't be popping a bunch of watercolor on it. But this was one that I didn't have. And I thought, well, fantastic. There is a hard book now. I like the hard books because, uh, I don't know, they just stay nicer longer. And I have open shelves, not cubicle closed shelves. So when they bump up against each other, unless it's a jam-packed shelf, then they can kind of, you know, lean and bend a little bit. So, so yeah. Oh, a balloon page. No, I love me some balloon pages. Yeah, so lots of fun. And I, he took out the, the repeat images, uh, is what I'm understanding, too. I don't see any repeats. Oh, the long boats. This is so cute. Searching for more. He has a newsletter. Here's all of his books. So yeah, Fantasy Tiny Homes. Just love the cover. Love the hardback. So these are the Derwent Chroma Flow, and it comes in the 150 box, but I didn't get 150. I got 78. Colt pens. They go ahead and take out what you would already have from the 72 set, and they put, they leave in what you would be missing from the additional, yeah, pencils. So I have this whole tray on the bottom, and look at, can we just appreciate the beautifulness of all of these? I'm trying to see what's on that pencil. Oh, that's a little insignia. Um, I love the gold rim on these. So I have the 72 set and this makes it 150. The reason I went this route is first of all when I bought the 72 set they were uh, not inexpensive and they're still not inexpensive but they really weren't inexpensive then and I think I was probably one of the outliers that really loved the chroma Chroma Flow. I know a lot of people had reservations about it, um, and now that the 150 set is out, people are on board probably because they want more colors. Now, I believe for me, I like these as much, if not more, than Prismacolors. They are soft, and they they blend very nicely, and they have beautiful colors. And it's a smaller barrel, so it's nicer on smaller fingers hands um i really do like them it looks like they have like a little bit of a line on the center um let me see and one thing it was missing is exactly the variety we're getting and that was one of my faults with the 72 set is i felt like i was missing missing colors quite a bit so super stoked let me see if I can. Let's pick. Okay, for instance, this is Brilliant Blue. And let me go with, this is a Blue Yonder. Okay. They're just, they're very, very smooth. And you can go really light, you can go dark. Just, I don't know, I really like them. I really enjoy using them. It's got some folds and creases in this paper. But they're very buildable. I could not wait until they were going to come out on a Blick or 
and I didn't I didn't want to go ahead and have there you go they're just stunning is that here this was here just absolutely stunning let's do these two let's do a jungle green and a spring bud okay so this is the jungle green And this is the spring bud. Now I just have to make room in my case because I have a lot of Derwent color pencil products in one case. Now I need to make room for 78. Y'all look, I really am still tacking on my fingernails. What a tragedy. But yeah, they blend beautifully. And I don't feel like I have to work so hard on these pencils. It saves my wrists, arms, hands. But there you go. Yeah, they're beautiful. So I can't wait to go ahead and organize these. And Color with Claire does have a swatch chart, family color chart, I believe, on her Ko-Fi. And so if you are interested... Um, if you're in the U.S. and you really love these pencils um, and you don't want to wait, Colt Pens, came, it came fast, came in just a couple of days. Let's see here. My, does it give my order date? No, it doesn't say on here, but yeah, it only took, they sent it um, DHL, uh, so it came very quickly and I did have to sign for them. But yeah, beautiful. I thought maybe I could go ahead and put the whole set back in this, but I just really don't go to use my pencils out of a tin. So I think I'll just have to, you know, save that work and put it into my pencil case. Maybe move some pencil cases around if I need to. All right. Next thing up, uh, I got these Nick Pro watercolor art brushes. It's a 15 pack synthetic squirrels. We have an 11 round, a one liner, a two flat, and a one oval wash. And it comes in this nice velour string, drawstring bag. So it mentioned just a few. Oh, it's saying you get 11 rounds. One, I was thinking of number one, like the size number one. There's 11 round, one liner, two flats, and, and one oval wash. So here they are. And I'm just going to go ahead and take off the tops and then give them a little, because they're hard when they come. Just give them a little brush out there. There's a square. Nice. Now these are the longer ones because I do do some artwork off, off camera that I never show. Yeah. Um, so I thought it would be good for me to have the longer ones so that I can go on my easel here on larger canvases, but still choke up on them and use them for coloring. There, that's a nice one. And this one is the number 10 round. Yeah. Here is the one inch flat. Beautiful. We've got extra fine extra fine liner here. I think I might take that from the bottom so I don't ruin the tip. Look at that long, that long tip. <laughs> I need some detail brushes. And here is a zero. I've been needing a zero for sure. And then here is the two round. That'll be nice. To me, you can never have enough detail brushes, especially in coloring world. 
all the small little details. Okay, and this is a three round. So, this, oops, you get rid of the packaging. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Just when you think you're done. Okay, here is an eight round. Here is a one round. I thought that one was missing. <laughs> sure enough it was. And here we have an oval wash. Oh, that'll be nice. That's a three quarter oval wash. And then And then we have the six round. Okay. All right. So here we are. Here we are. That is a nice set of brushes. We're going to have to try them out when we do a little play around. So I'm just going to slide a little bit of them in here and save them for later. But it's cool. They also come in this little box. They have some brush care tips. I never let my brushes get crusty or junky, so I generally am able to keep most of the brushes that I get. But every now and then I like to, uh, uh, well, I take that back. I mean, maybe ones that I've had for like six, seven years. I've had like a lot of stray hairs or been too heavy on them. Uh, but I still keep them from like glue, you know? All right. Next thing is I got the Prima Marketing Woodlands watercolor set. This was from Amazon, by the way. And I've gone ahead and swatched these. It went a little heavy on the cavern here on the left, but otherwise I think the swatches look good. I thought these would be really nice colors. We have a Sand Ridge Shadow Cavern Foxberry. That's a very pretty color. Pond, Stream, Bear, Mist, Greystone, Daylight, Redwood, and Deep Moss. And they are very, very pretty. And I keep the swatch in there. So that is that one. And then for the longest time, I have wanted to get the White Knights paints, watercolors. And then these granula granulating ones. Um, stuck. I'm not going to keep the box, so I don't think I need to try not to mess up these nails that are already messed up. I didn't let them dry enough. I'm trying to get in before the sun really is blazing outside to do this video because I wouldn't be able to do it midday. It's just too hot. Okay. So we have extra fine artist colors granulation, and we have all of our colors down here with their pigments and they do have the color names down here all right so let's open them up and see what we have here important and here are the swatch cards so i am going to unwrap but fast forward these so that we can see them
Okay. I just realized I was real quiet through that. <laughs> okay, so here's our swatch cards. Look how beautiful these colors are. We're going to let them have a little drying time. This one wasn't as wet. This particular box was not as wet as the other, so it didn't have a lot of time ability flow to do its thing, but I'll be working with these later on. So let me just put those over there and we'll let this dry. All right. And let's see, what else do I have for you? I have some new sparkling magical watercolors from my favorite gal on Etsy. A be beautiful purple tissue paper. Oh, and they always smell so good. Oh, so good. I'd say every like quarter or so I order, or a little less. Here she is, Sparkling Magical Watercolors. You can find her on Instagram at a factory girl. Girl is with G-Y-R-L. So there is her information. This is not the first time I have unpacked her sparkling watercolors. I've purchased from her quite a bit and she offers all of my subscribers a discount. I'll leave all the information in the description as I do. Look how gorgeous these are. Look how absolutely gorgeous. And then she always gives me some freebies. Here's a cotton candy. Why is, I can't, can't tell what that says. Sorry, I can't read your writing. <laughs> but look how cute those are. To try those out. And then these are some freebies too. Look at that blue. And here's some cute little ones to also try. How'd she get these things in here? I like that maybe. All right, for the samples, I won't go ahead and swatch those, but let's swatch go ahead and get this cans and watercolor out. Let's put them up here like this. So you can see the swatch already for these, right? But we got to try them out. We just have to. Now for the, I saw someone on a video yesterday and I guess I didn't catch them right when they posted the video. But with these homemade watercolor paints, the best thing that I have found to do is to give yourself, to put a little water of them on them, let them sit a little bit, and then you need to really stir them up so that you get, you know, all of the goodness out of the paint. Otherwise you get very, because I saw on her swatches, that they were very uh, translucent and trust me her paints are not translucent <laughs> so if they are they haven't sat long enough or you haven't stirred them up enough you can't just go in with a dry butt brush with just a little tiny water and just swipe give it a swipe all right I guess I can go ahead and start down here look how gorgeous. Stunning. Yep, the longer you let them sit and marinate, the better. So you've got, you know, mica in there and you want to be able to get into that real good. You want it soft not hard to get a good swatch. Beautiful. I love this orange. I got this palette because it was, uh, 
I do have a couple of greens from her, but I don't have like this auburny orange. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, let's go for this green. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Now, a lot of times I get her mystery tins, and I just tell her, you know, throw in what you want me to see. <laughs> but this time, this is a, a palette that she has. So I will put this specific palette in the description in case it lights your heart on fire. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's an amazing, like, chartreuse color. Oh, wow. That is a gorgeous palette. Absolutely stunning. All right, let's go over to these. Ooh, look how beautiful that is. It's a peachy pink. Yes, please. Gorgeous. Trying not to get some spillage here. Look at this pink. absolutely bright and beautiful all right let's get into this blue oh wow oh wow be still my heart Now the reason why I was not using my new brush is a lot of times for this initial, like getting them ready, I like to use a brush. I have a lot of these little water brushes that I'm using now. If I scrub too hard and spread the bristles, then I'm not torn up about it because I have others. <laughs> that is a gorgeous gold. And then we have this pink, which Stay so I can swatch you. Very pretty, like lavender pink. Super stunning. Absolutely super stunning. There we go. We got our brush back to where it needs to be. Let's let these dry. Let me get them up closer for you to see. Look how amazing those are. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I'll go ahead. I know I swatched these already but let me just give you an idea live on what these are looking like and I like the little ring in the back because you can put my hand there sorry brush you're not done with yet okay 
These don't require much marination. I love this blue. Okay, so we got those swatched, and I think what I want to do is just get a little bigger swatch of one of the White Knights. So, I'm just going to get a little layer here. making this look a little bit like an eyeball. Yeah. 
I might even put a little um, salts in there. I've got this kosher gourmet salt. Just put just a couple in here. See what that does. Let me give you a little closer up on that. <laughs> <laughs> but look at all of these amazing paints. Super excited. Now, if you're ever in a coloring slump, I've said this before, if you're in a coloring slump, what you've picked out to color isn't doing it for you, or you just, you're just not feeling it, not feeling any kind of hobby, not just coloring. Um, organization I was talking about this with a fellow YouTuber these last few days. And I, she was like, what do you do when, you, when you're in a slump? And I said, well, there's a couple things. I might like, buy a couple like, open stock things, like no big, no big huge purchase, right? Um, but retail therapy, that helps. Also, it gets you inspired. Like these colors I can envision on some of the pages I have left to color for the month. Um, also organization, and that's why I also did some organization myself. This whole front here, which you can't see, is reorganized. And all of my books, I reorganized all of those. Uh, and I have two of the rolling carts, and I haven't really been using them. Um, so I figured I don't have the right supplies um, on the cart. So I needed to get the right supplies on the cart. And so I've been doing that. And I will go ahead while these dry and I'll roll you some footage. Now, things are still in a little bit of disarray, but you will see that I'm getting somewhere at least. I have a table two uh, next to me, which is supposed to be like my diamond painting and where I edit videos. This is where obviously I do these videos and I color here as well. Um, but I also had a set of drawers that, uh, you know, I wasn't getting in those drawers. So I was like, what's in these drawers that I'm not been pulling out and using? So I think sometimes like rotate your supplies, uh, be able to uh, put them in a new container, uh, reorganize your pencils, uh, anything like that to me, at least in my opinion, and that is my advice. Do some of those things because they may help you get past your hump, slump hump <laughs> and also it gets you to you know try some of the products that maybe have been neglected because you know sometimes we can get in a rush to like get, get these pages done for the month and I think for me something that I need to be more cautious and careful about is first of all my body slows me down which can be a very frustrating part of the month but my coloring started to like narrow on what I was using on my pages for, for me, for me. I like to use a lot more mixed media and I started to narrow myself down. So getting the Chroma Flow um, pencils, um, getting some of these, we got to try these um, watercolors too, I forgot. Let's just try a couple, a couple of these neons probably as I mentioned. But yeah, that, those are my suggestions because I think it happens to all of us. I don't think any of us are immune immune to any of that so I'm going to spill for short <laughs> I'm gonna put down some some clear water I hope do I have any left in here yeah I do I'll just try out this pink neon so that looks maybe I should have Shook it, shook it, shook it, shook it, shook it. Shake, shake, shake. I don't know that you would really want to be pouring that. I don't know. I don't think I like that idea. I think I want to dip in here. Okay, that seems to be better. It needed a shake shake. These little particles came out. Okay, so we'll see.
Okay. <laughs> All right. So not bad. Not bad. Do I want to maybe let's just put a little purple in the mix. They are definitely bright and it's pretty mixed. The two colors, look how nice that is. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're like, you know, they're not professional watercolors or close to it. But I think if you want to get a neon look, I think it's not not just so bad. I think they're good. I think they'll work for what I want them for on my Alien Worlds Kirby Rosanna's pages. And there's six of those there. All right, so that's the haul portion. I think I got, did I? Let me just make sure, make sure I did get everything. These are just so beautiful. Actually, you know what? I want to take, take some of this green. I know I have a little bit of water left in there, don't I? Well, that was kind of a dumb idea. I thought I had more water bottles here. For some reason, I don't see them. Here's some water. Sometimes you just got to play. Just got to play. I got, see, I was trying to cover up a spot I made, and I just made another one. Okay, we'll do this. So it's looking a little bit of a, uh, like a bird. And I don't really want to spray again. But I need a beak.
Okay, well that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Okay. So there we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to let those sit there. The other thing that I had gotten was some diamond painting things. So I got this diamond painting pen. So here it is. Look how glittery and fun that is. And then I got these putties. And I'll put a link in the description for these, but look how cute these are. Whoa! Look how cute. Aren't those adorable? Like, I really don't want to stick something in there. But look how darling and cute they are. Okay, so that's those. And then I got a couple of cute cover minders. Little magnets. Look how adorable that is. I also get these things to make it fun for my granddaughter because sometimes she'll get in a funk, right? And, uh some of these show up and uh, gets her back in the mood to do her own thing too. Look how adorable. It's from Diamond Art Supply. These things. And then I got another putty. Here we go. Look how cute. All right, I hope those were in focus because I couldn't really see <laughs> if you saw them the way I did. Here you go. Diamond Art Supply at Etsy. And two more cover minders. Look how cute. Look how adorable that is. Also, my grandsons have been diamond painting with me, too. So, they'll be excited for all of these. Isn't that adorable? Anywho. So, that's what I got from Diamond Art Supply on Etsy. And I'm going to take a little break here and let all these things dry. And get a drink. Try to dry my nails a little more. And then I think we'll come back and I'll show you what I've been coloring for the month so far what I have left to color uh, which is quite a bit and we'll just chat a little bit since I seem to be a little more quiet on my swatching than I intended when you finally get a chance to like play with the things that you've like wanted to play with but you want to show it in a video <laughs> I know those youtubers out there you know what I mean <laughs> all right everybody one last look while it's wet and we'll be back. Okay, now I'm going to share with you on what I have slated for the rest of the month in coloring. So I have in Sweet and Simple Whimsy Girls with Bubble of Coloring, we are doing this page. And I thought I would go ahead and take advantage of the purple hair, purple eyes prompt. So I've gone ahead and started this using some markers. And I'll just refer to my journal here for June. So I used Cali Art alcohol marker so far on her and 
need to finish that one. And then in Tropogoth, I have not started this page yet. So I need to do this one. And then in Spooky, I have started this page and I use Rosa Gallery watercolors. And what I intend to do is a sunset sky in the back. So I have that to do. And then the Magic Jars B page I have to do. And then in my Woodland Kingdom coloring book, Body Color with Sherry and Jamie's Coloring Love, I have this page to do. Now, I know a lot of people don't, um, are afraid of this book because of all the zigzaggy lines. So I thought maybe we could Go ahead and start in here and I'll just show you. I'll use some Ahuhu markers. Let's do a G5 and a G8. Here is a lighter one. And I'll go on the edges here. You have a little extra bleed proof area because you have zigzaggy lines. And then I'm just going to go on the underneath here and along the line. And then I'm going to go back. Actually, I make this a little a little thicker through the bottom and then there so we've got one leaf already done and then let's see here do we have another one like that we do here down here, so again, I'll go on the outside with the lighter. Okay, and then we'll go in with the G8. Doing this upside down. And get some darkness going down on the bottom through the middle. There. It's very easy to do. We have one here. Go in with a darker color on the bottom edge here. And then go down the center a little darker. There we go. So yeah, it's pretty easy to do. Let me keep these out. And then uh, let's do, this is looking like my dog Shmoo, which is white with black spots. I might go ahead and do, okay, so I'll give them some spots here. This is a Copic black. And then we have, he has like 
of black tip on his ears and then it goes into a brown which actually goes a little further than that and I'll start getting some strokes like that and then let's do that's a burnt sienna let me go over to let me do a Spectrum Noir brown. And I'm just gonna go a little bit over that black And I'm gonna go from the bottom on this. And then go into the black for this one too. Make it look a little bit like hair. Okay, cute. And then we have this on the tail. So he's got some black on the tail. And then it's white at the end. I'm gonna go back into the black. It gets a little lighter brown. There we go. So that's how I'll do schmoo. So yeah. And then I'll do different colors for the other animals. And as far as doing a flower, we have a bow. Either that's a lime or a lemon maybe. Perhaps. So yeah, that won't take too long and we'll see what kind of background ideas I have for that. These are Sarah Renee Clark uh, pages. <laughs> so I'll just cover that so I don't bleed through. All right, so we did a little bit on that one and then for magic jars, let's see here. What kind of things do we want to do to magic jars? So for this, I think maybe it's a light blue. I could do a light blue in here. So I guess I could go ahead and start telling you what's been going on with life here at home. My daughter just had a surgery 
on Tuesday. She had broken her tailbone and a hematoma formed and never dissolved. So she, they were going to cut it out because it had been three months and they felt that it might be calcified. What the surgeon wound up doing is aspirating 200 cc's out of the hematoma. And since she's been home, she feels like it's reforming. So we go back to the doctor my daughter is grown, by the way. <laughs> She's 30. Um, but, yeah, she needed us to take her to the hospital, so we stayed for that. They just gave her a little twilight, if you will, and aspirated. So, it's looked like it was going to work. And he did say that she would have some swelling, but it's kind of back to the way it was already. So we're thinking that's probably not a good thing. So we'll see. We go back in five days now to see what he thinks about it and what he might want to do. I'm afraid he's going to say, yeah, I got to cut now which is what we were <clears throat> planning on him having to do. But I think because of her age and whatnot, he was trying not to cut if he didn't have to. And I can't appreciate that, but she still, she has pain from it because it's like the size of a cantaloupe. And uh, yeah, and I just, to just talk to her. She's kind of upset that it didn't work, of course, but she just wants to feel better, you know. It's been three, three months of dealing with that. So I can understand being frustrated with that. I think I'm probably going to do the elements on this page in pencil. Um, <clears throat> and not alcohol marker. Normally I would do like a, a two-tone or tritone sky but I think I want to keep it simple it's a simple page so it doesn't need a lot of fancy extra time involved cute page though I've been seeing all of you uh, when you're tagging me doing such cute work on this page. So we had that, uh, my daughter's surgery gone wrong. <laughs> and my mother-in-law had an appointment. And, um, Although it went well overall, um, there are some continuing concerns with her too. So it's just, it's been a busy summer already. Been very busy. Um, I don't know if you all have ever heard of this, but seasonal affective disorder. I don't know if any of you have experienced it or know someone. 
but I have that. I was diagnosed in my 20s, but I kind of like blew it off as silly, you know. And I lived in Florida at the time. It was always freaking hot. And uh, it was another reason I ignored it because what it happens to me in the summer, not winter months, which is mostly when people are diagnosed with that. It's usually the winter months because it's so gray and overcast, which I actually enjoy. <laughs> gray and overcast days. Um, I think part of it is the heat really bothers me. Um, I take medicine that makes me burn real easily for my autoimmune illnesses. And so, yeah, I'm, I try not to let it really affect me, but it does. There's, our air conditioner is having trouble keeping up with 95, 96 degree weather. And so, you know, sitting in a warm house isn't too fun. It's not conducive to wanting to color. I'm a girl that at night when I sleep, I like a blanket on me for comfort and basically can't sleep without. So I have very broken sleep in the summer when it gets really hot. Like 80, our air conditioner can keep up. But anything over that, it's a struggle bus. So yeah, I, I think this year I'm experiencing more of those side effects from, yeah, just kind of, you know, I'm a happy gal. I know you all know that through my, my videos, but sometimes it's really a struggle behind the scenes sometimes. <laughs> I've, like I said, I've been rearranging my room to try to, this was on the less hot days, so that I could kind of get a change in mood, so to speak, and I did. I enjoyed organizing. I still have a lot to go. I'm not sure at what point I'm showing you my results, maybe now. I could probably cut to it now and you'll see I still have some work to do but I got my shelves reorganized and um, I have room to you know get some other things organized it's just a matter of doing it Okay, so I think that's good for the background. And I'll just do some, I try not to get too, too close so that these things bleed outside the lines. But I think that'll be a nice, cute background. See if I've missed any place before I put this marker back. All right. And then we'll see what I wind up doing for the rest. I think this is gonna be a dark hole because if you were looking into a hive, it would be dark, wouldn't it? So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. And let me put this in front. Actually, I think that might be, it'll be okay, even if it runs. So bubble of coloring and I have this page here that we're doing. She's almost done, but I haven't started. And I'm not too terribly worried because I think what I'm going to do is base it in some Tombow markers, some brushables, uh, some Zig uh, brushables, some lighter colors, and I think I'm going to have a light pink Horse and then some greenery and things going on. Of course, I'm going to have some metallics on there. 
This is the one that we did on the opposite page. And so um, I don't necessarily need to match, but I think just generally it will some based on all the vines and whatnot. <clears throat> so I have that one to do. And then Disney Meg and I in the rabbit's tail, we have this and we've also added a uh, Veronica and she wanted to join in. So this is what I have so far. I made this an orca and um, I did some of uh, this a little different than the way that it was illustrated. And then in these bubbles, I went ahead and did the sparkling magical watercolors. And then I took uh, a Derwent drawing white pencil and went around the bubbles. I think I might either do stickles still around inside there. I don't think I have... Um, or I could do an extreme glitter. I could do one of these extreme glitters inside the bubble. I have these little plant bubbles done in the sparking, sparkling magical watercolors. And I have these to do. I've colored the dolphins and I've done the mermaid tails which I might tweak a little bit still and I've gotten this shell and pearl done so I, I don't have a whole lot left to do I need to blend this a little better I see I'm not quite liking that too much this fin's okay but this one needs a little work but yeah that's what it's looking like so far Love, love, love these metallics. So I've got to work on that one. And then in Small Victories by Joanna Bassford, I have, I started this page and this is all Rosa Gallery watercolor. And I need to go ahead and do a little pencil work on these. And then I thought I would do a um, trying to think where I put, now that I've moved things around, I can't figure out where some of the things, like, where's my eraser? <laughs> Let me just see if I can use one of my electric racer on top of this roof. I think I went out a little bit. Now oh, it's a little better. Um, so I, th I think I might want to do like a pale blue, um, like a cloud formation on each one, but have it maybe on a different side for each. And then go ahead and I'm gonna use my chromaflows for this and detail th this out. So first page in that. And then I know Coloring Bumblebee has some uh, prompts and I don't know that I have something for every prompt, but here, now I did this with the Crayola Super Tips and I absolutely can't, I just do not like, do not like what I did here. So this is gonna be a fix it page for sure. I'm, yeah, you know, they're already dark, the super tips, uh, this, so I'm just, I'm going to have to go darker or use my Derwent white to lighten some things. I think I will have the ability to save it, but it's going to be a little bit difficult. I should not have done the lights like this for sure. Um, yeah, so I need, I need to save this. I like bright and colorful, it's just, and and here I tried to do some, uh, yeah, no, 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 
so I've got to fix that page. <laughs> it's not working out for me. This is A Million Llamas by Lulu Mayo. I did start this one and I was using Derwent Chromaflow for here. And this was before I got the new set. So we'll see what other new colors I have. But I went with a more muted palette here. And that's A Million Llamas. And then I have this one to do. This is the Lulu Mayo Art Therapy, and this is the big book. And I know one of the prompts is strawberries. So I thought I would do either one of these pages. I'm just not sure because I thought, okay, the strawberries are going to be red, right? That would be a lot of brown if I do a chocolate fountain. That was kind of my only concern about this page is a lot of brown. Um, I mean, it still can look cute, obviously. So I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I want to do that one or if I want to do this one. But one or the other. For sure. And I'm not, I think I'll probably want to use the Chroma Flows on this paper, but I'm not positive if I want to base it with Tombows first. We shall see. And then in A Million Mermaids by Lulu Mayo, I had started this with the magical watercolors. I had made a couple of mistakes when I was coloring, and so I decided to do a cover-up. I need to do better on my dolphins, and then I need to do her. And let's see if I can erase. I made this. I changed color palette is basically what I had done. Is this a race? It can get lighter, yeah. So we'll see. I I already fixed it by doing the background, but now I just need to do these little elements. So I think I'll be able to do that. And then I was thinking about a million little monsters, but I haven't picked a page. And I don't have to do one, necessarily. Let's see, I have this as a whip. Could always work on that one. The one that I've done in here already was Halloween of 23. I did that one, which was fun. So yeah, I'm trying to get into my Lulu Mayo books because I haven't been in them in a while. And then in Fairy Tales by Emily Lidahall Oberg. I have this whip that I need to finish, which I probably won't do this month because this is this month's page for Doodle Robots Fairy Tales um, Group Buddy Color. So I've done this so far. And uh, let me see. Let me just look. Let me just look. Fairy tales. Yeah, I used. Is that? Oh no, that was the rabbit's fairy tales. Yeah, I've used the Derwent drawing pencils and the Chroma Flow. I knew I used Chroma Flow, but it was the Derwent drawing uh, pencils that I used for the building. And so I need to finish that and decide on a background. And then I used a sparkle pop for the bow. Not the bow, but the bookmark. Yeah. So I think that's turning out pretty cute. And then I have a buddy color with Dusty and uh, in coloring with your octopus. And hers is already done. So I'm I'm behind you guys because I've just had too much going on in life but 
this is the page that we're doing. So I think what I could do, yeah, what we could do, let me put this to the side and let's, let's use some of the new chromaflows. Let's just see what we have. Let's see what I can get going here. So we have some purpley pinks. All right, just taking a, an inventory of what we have here. So for, I think actually these, I'll show you on the, let's see here, and I might wanna do this here. I'm just eyeballing. I have not swatched these yet. Just eyeballing. All right. I'm going to start on the octopus. So you'll see that there's, um, they do like a brown and a gray. There's also some other, I have the actual book of colored illustrations for traveling with your octopus. And a lot of it sometimes is like the uh, purple and gray. And so I think that's what I'm gonna do here. Let me just give these a sharpen. I like to sharpen new pencils. All right, so let me tell you what we have. We have Aztec purple, we have dewberry, and then we have almond frost, moon rock, and winter lake and so i think from the top i'm gonna go with these so i'm gonna go in with the dewberry and see how these chroma flows work on this paper because it's a smooth paper Okay, let me see what this darker purple does under here. I wanted to ask you all if anybody is watching the YSL trial online with little Woody and Young Thug. <laughs> I um, went to school to be a paralegal and so I love court TV, if you will, or LawTube. And 
wow, there's just so many crazy things happening in that trial. It's probably subject matter that YouTube doesn't really want me to talk about, so I won't say exactly what it's about, but if you do watch it, let me know in the comments because it's really blowing up. They're off um, due to the holidays and stuff, but wow, just some crazy things happening. Um, I've been having to rest because I'm still having trouble with my feet. And now that my uh, mother-in-law and daughter have had their procedures, I've called my doctors back to try to get back into them in between what everybody else has going on. Okay, I'm gonna try to bring in a little bit of this almond frost. And see what that does. down to here. These pencils work very nicely. This is the Moon Rock Let me see if this is darker. Yeah. Let's do the moon rock just above. And I'm gonna take this um, dewberry, like the pinky purple, over that almond color. a weird definition line which I created and I don't want there I 
And then I'm going to take the, not the almond frost, but the dewberry back. And I'm going to bring it down into the purple. Just kind of give that a blend out. And I'm going to go in a different direction now. I have the octopus like very like muted. I think I probably want the little suckers on the bottom to have a little pink moment here. some purple back on here. trying to make him a little chameleon like that's what I'm trying to do here like try to show some variation of colors actually I might go in with the purple again here and by using the almond and the grays I think I can achieve that look. 
and the dewberry. <laughs> See how nicely they blend? And then this is the almond frost. And just take a little bit of that. side here so yeah I think this is how I am going to color it I just figured we would get a start on it together I hope you all are having a nice summer and getting to enjoy what you like to do for the summers like I said, I struggle a little bit with the heat. And I think if I ever get into a coloring slump, it usually is summertime. That's probably a little bit biological for me. So, gotta fight that a little bit. So much of life is just um, going with the flow. Trying to. You know, get the things that are necessities done, along with trying to do some things you enjoy. I know those of you with children who have, you know, them home versus in school, that that can be a challenge. Keeping them busy and interested in other things. Like I said earlier, my grandsons have been enjoying some diamond painting this summer already. So that's been fun. We've had them over quite a few times <clears throat> already. Yeah, it's just about balance, isn't it? There's some days I just, I just, I have an idea of how I want to color a page and then I just don't get to it and it can be frustrating. Sometimes I have to come on video, <laughs> force myself to make the time. Cause it's not fair to love something so much and not have you know the time to get to do it or it's not even sometimes time it's just you know sometimes for me why I did some reorganization it's you know where's everything at because I color in bed I color at this desk I took paints with me to the hospital and didn't wind up using them <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't work out too good. I 
I did read a little while I was waiting on my daughter to come out of surgery. It didn't last long though, because I was worried. <laughs> it's hard for me if I'm worrying to concentrate. Plus, you know, there's other people, you know, with their loved ones in the late waiting room and they've got conversations or they might indulge you in conversation. So yeah, it was, it was all good. It was all good overall. I just want my daughter to feel better, you know? A cantaloupe sized anything in your body, no matter where it's at, it's not a, not a pleasant thing to experience. I'm going over his little suckers here <laughs> with some darker purple. Trying to give it some definition. Tell me what you think about this here octopus. I think he's going to turn out cute. I think he's going to have a, a nice little appearance and completed pages. With all his beautiful coloring. Muted, but fun. Got some of these. to define more. Okay, so those are the colors we're going to use for Octopus Man. Let's see if you can see him. Let me... Let me 
me turn down the light a little so you can see a little better how that's looking. It's shiny paper. <laughs> so, there we go. I'll get you up real close. So yeah, I think that's going to turn out cute. It'll be fun to finish. I'm glad I got started on it. So that's pretty much it. I've finished some pages. And uh, I also did my Alien Worlds first page. Uh, and I'm so tempted to do another one, but I know I don't have time for it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a nice time coloring with you and showing some of my new supplies. And uh, we'll definitely uh, probably have a couple more videos for the end of the month unless something happens. And uh, yeah, so you all have a great weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye now. Take care. Happy coloring.